Hello, hello, hello. And welcome to Faith Manifested with Andrea. We're going to dive into the word today. We're going to look at Deuteronomy 20. When you go to war. We're going to look at chapter 15 of the Deliverance and Spiritual Warfare Manual. Bilal the Wicked Ruler. Concepts we will see. To not be afraid when going to war. Not fearing your enemy. Encouraging words from the man or woman of God. Preparing for battle. Don't cut down the trees. That will nourish you during your battle. We'll look at the demons associated with Balao. Spirits of rape and abuse. Spirits of alcohol and drunkenness. Spirits of infirmity. Questions to ponder. Am I ready for war or spiritual warfare? Does the idea of war frighten me? Do I see the evidence of Balao, the wicked ruler, in my life or those around me? Affirmations. God is our God and we are his people. We put on the armor of God and prepare for battle. We are no longer afraid of spiritual warfare. God fights for us and we are victorious over our enemies. Belial, the wicked ruler, is exposed, bound, and cast out. And what is bound in the heavens is bound on earth. And what's loosed in the heavens is loosed on earth. In the name of Jesus. In Deuteronomy 20, we will continue seeing Moses telling the Israelites how they're supposed to live. The even the strategies of war when they go into their promised land, when they go into their inheritance, when they go and get everything God has told them to have. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for the day. We thank you for your love, grace, and mercy. We thank you for this moment in time. Less of me and more of you, Father God. Let me speak as an oracle of God and not my words, thoughts, and opinions, but your own. Send your fire from heaven to touch my mind, my words, my thoughts, my lips, my tongue, my mouth, that I will speak a word that will build and glorify you up and build your children up to give a deeper understanding and revelation of you. You are our God and we're your people. Bless the viewer on today. Bless the subscriber on today. Bind any devil, demon, witch, or warlock that will come against me and my family, the viewers and their families. You are our God. And we're your people. Arise, O oh God, and let your enemies be scattered. Let those who hate you flee before you. Go before this broadcast. Move anything that will block this word from being received. Let your fire be upon this word. Let your fire be upon this video. Let the blood of Jesus be upon every listener. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. So once again, we're in Deuteronomy 20. And it's Moses speaking to the Israelites of what they're supposed to do when they go into the land God has told them to possess. It's a fairly short chapter. It's only 20 verses. So let's go. When you go out to battle against your enemies and you see horses and chariots and people more numerous than you, do not be afraid of them. For the Lord your God who brought you up from the land of Egypt is with you. The title of this chapter is when you go to war. And Moses said, when you go against, when you go to war and you see people more advanced in their weapons, more knowledgeable of spiritual warfare, uh -oh, look like they have more power than you. He says, do not be afraid. Do not fear. Back in the old days, the army was me could measure their strength 
by the horses and chariots, skilled soldiers that they had. Now we look at it from the spiritual realm of things. Same concepts, just in the spiritual realm. When you approach the battle, the priest shall come forward and speak to the people. What? The priest was supposed to come forward before every battle and give an encouraging word. Inspire, encourage, and lead. Be the voice of God in this battle. As you're going into spiritual warfare, have you sought out the man or woman of God? Has God given you a word for how to proceed in the battle? How to, the, the battle strategies? Verse 3, and shall say to them, Hear, O Israel, you are advancing today to battle against your enemies. Do not lack courage. Do not be afraid or panic or tremor in terror before them. The priest will set the tone for the battle. Verse 4, for the Lord your God is he who goes with you to fight for you against our enemies to save you. He says, don't put your fear and thoughts and who you are that's battling, but in the God is battling for you. Put your trust and confidence in him. He goes with you and fights for you against your enemies to save you from them. The officers shall also speak. So God is putting rules and regulations in place for even battle. There's battle strategies. There are battle tactics. There are protocols of war. And the officers should also speak to the soldiers saying, what man is the soldier? The officers should also speak to the soldiers saying, what man is there who has built a new house and has not yet dedicated it? Let him go and return to his house and otherwise he might die in battle and another man would dedicate it. God was telling them, make sure your stuff is in order when you get ready to go into warfare. Uh oh, you can't just go up into warfare any kind of way. What if something happens to you while you're engaging in warfare? Have you left your family protected? Have you left your family covered? What man has planted a vineyard and has not yet put it to use harvesting this fruit? Let him go and return to his house. Otherwise he might die in the battle and another man will begin to use his fruit. God is saying, making sure their houses are covered, make sure their harvest, their finance, whatever is covered. Knowing that in God, these things are protected. And who is the man who is engaged, legally promised to a woman and has not married her? Y'all better stop dating these men and women for so long. And then trying to do spiritual warfare. What? Let him go and return to his house and otherwise he might die in the battle and another man will marry her. Uh-oh. People trying to do spiritual warfare shacking up. People trying to do spiritual warfare and being the side chick or side do a mistress or mister to a married person. God said, handle your affairs. Get your stuff in order. It's time to do warfare. There are protocols to this thing. And if you don't follow protocol, you could get injured, even killed. Spiritual warfare is no joke. But he also tells you, get yourself in order and don't fear your enemy. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Come in battle. Because God Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, is battling with you. Then the officer shall speak further to the soldiers and say, who is the man who is afraid and lacks courage? Let him go and return to his house so that he does not cause his brother's courage to fail like his own. He puts it blankly. Are, there are some people that are afraid to engage in spiritual warfare. Truthfully, a lot of us haven't been trained properly how to engage in spiritual warfare. And then when we do start getting trained in the battle, and we start encountering things, it scares us and we back off from it. God is saying, check yourself. If you're fearful, get your faith increased in God. 
But don't let your fear make somebody else doubt. I tell people when my dad had his stroke, I put out a, a, a message on Facebook. You know, prayers are well, welcome. Encouraging words are welcome. But demons, doubters are not welcome. Because I couldn't let anybody get close to him that was going to cause us, me, my mom, my, my sister, you know, to doubt God's power, God's word. I've done the same thing for my husband as he recovers. Some may not feel and, and, and may not have faith in God this, the way that you do. Don't let their fear cause you to miss the mark. Don't let their fear cause fear to settle in you because fear is not of God. God has not given us the spirit of fear. But there's protocols in warfare. If you're having some fear, get back to God. Get back in his word fast and pray till your fear is gone. And then come back. So you don't cause others to doubt. And when I say, that means you need to just get in the word of God. Start fast and start praying. Okay. And it shall be when the officers have finished speaking to the soldiers, they shall appoint commanders of armies over them. These very protocols that God is giving the people right now, we're going to see it play out in the spirit, in the warfare that the Israelites engage in. We're going to even especially see this in the battle with Gideon and the Midianites. When Gideon had several thousand soldiers and God says, no, it's too many, it's too many. Because if you fight this battle in your own strength and the strength that you of these people that you have with you, you're going to think that it's by your hand and your might that you won the battle. He's God says, but I'm going to put you in an impossible situation that when you get the victory, you know nobody gets the glory but me, God, because it was me fighting for you. And God took Gideon from several thousand people to 300. And he used some of the same protocols right here. He asked whether someone that had been married recently or someone engaged. He asked them whether things that they needed to go take care of. He asked them was there people that were in fear of the battle. And several thousand went to 300 men at the end. This word reads clear all the way through. And it shall be when the officer have finished speaking to the soldiers, they shall appoint commanders of armies over them. God has rules and regulations. He has protocol. He has levels to this thing. And you may start out as a foot soldier. God may advance you to a general, to a sergeant in the army of the Lord. The things that you're going through is preparing you for the battle. It's preparing you for the war so you can be leading others. And guiding them in God's way. When you advance to a city to fight against it, you shall first offer it terms of peace. If that city accepts your terms of peace and opens its gate to you, then all the people who are found in it shall become your forced labor and shall serve you. Now in spiritual warfare, we don't offer peace to demons. There's no way we can ever offer peace to demons. But we may encounter people that become our natural physical enemies. And maybe God may have you offer them peace in the form of you praying for them. He may even tell you to buy them a gift. I'm telling you some things God has told me to do. My flesh didn't want to do it, but it was God's way of giving that person the opportunity to see that peace was offered to them so they could choose to either walk in peace with me or fight it out. And sadly, there have been one or two that decided to fight it out. There were maybe people that when God has you pray and fast for people, even your enemies, you're offering them that peace. And they may still choose. Trust and believe anybody that's coming against a child of God. God has shown that person who you are, whether through a dream or whatever. And if they choose to come and fight you still after God has shown them, Whatever occurs was the choice that they made. Same thing with these cities. 
God told them if they came to a city and they offered it peace, if that city accepts your terms of peace and opens its gates to you, then all the people who are found in it shall become your forced labor and shall serve you. God did it because these people were doing practices outside of God's will. And there were certain people that weren't, I guess, that bad off or that severe in sin that God allowed some to live. But then there were some people that were doing some serious abominable things. However, if it does not make peace with you, but makes war against you, then you shall lay siege to it. And when the Lord your God gives it into your hand, you shall strike down all the men in it with the edge of the sword. Uh oh, why? Because the men carried seed. And whatever was in the men, they could continue to reproduce more like them. They could come back and attack them later. Only the women and the children and the animals and everything that is in the city, all its spoils, you should take as plunder for yourself. And you shall use the spoil of your enemies, which the Lord your God has given you. The women, the children, the spoil, the enemy, the animals could be taken. Okay. What does it say? The Bible says the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. Those that refuse to live for God, their things are going to be taken from them. And even placed in your hands as you do warfare. Help, Father. That is what you shall do to all the cities that are very far away from you, which are not among the cities of these nations nearby, which you are about to dispossess. God gave them battle strategies. Which cities to do what with? But you shall utterly destroy them, the Hittite, the Amorite, the Canaanite, the Perizzite, the Hivite, and the Jebusite, just as the Lord your God has commanded you. These people were doing some abominable things. He says, don't even spare them to live. Help, Father. So that they will not teach you to act in accordance with the detestable practices which they have done in worship and service for their gods. And in this way, cause you to sin against the Lord your God. They were doing idolatry. They were doing child sacrifice. They were doing uh, what man on man and woman on woman. They were doing pedophilia. They were doing incest. They were doing all manners of detestable things. Witchcraft. Help, Father. When you besiege a city. Let me go back. God says, these people destroy because even if you let any of them survive, uh-oh, they will cause you to start doing the things that they were doing. And no, I'm not telling anybody to go out and kill anybody. What we do now, we attack it in the spiritual realm. Our prayers are powerful. We pray for people caught in these lifestyles. And these ways that are contrary to the word of God. We pray for them that they will repent and come back to God. Because it's not judgment. Certain sins. The judgment was even death. When you besiege a city for a long time. This is long war y'all. You may be in a long war. My battle with my husband recovering is, is almost at three years. When you besiege a city for a long time. Make a war against it. In order to capture it, you shall not destroy its fruit bearing trees by swinging an axe against them. For you may eat from them and you shall not cut them down. God said, when you go into battle, be careful what you're cutting down. Don't cut down the things that will feed you, that will nourish you, that will help you endure, that will help you persevere. Don't cut down going to church. Don't cut down fasting. Don't cut down praying. Don't cut down tithing and offerings. Don't cut down reading the word of God and speaking the word of God. These are the trees that its fruit will feed you. My pastor, Bishop Thomas, will often say, when somebody's going through something, you can tell because that's when they'll stop going to church. They're cutting down the trees that will nourish them. 
He says, I don't understand it. That's when you should be in church more. That's when you should be in the word of God more. God told us in his word, in the protocol, when you go to war, don't cut down the things, the trees that will feed and nourish your soul during this battle. For it is the tree of the field of man that it should be besieged or destroyed by you. He said, use common sense. Why would you destroy the thing that can feed you? Last verse of this chapter, only the trees which you know are not fruit trees shall you destroy and cut down so that you may build siege works against the city that is making war with you until it falls. He says, there are certain things I'm going to place around you. There are certain things in your battle that's going to be there to feed you. And there's going to be certain things that you're going to be able to use that's going to make you war weapons, artillery your arsenal. He says there are certain things that's going to be battering rams and ladders and towers for you to take down these walled cities. Break down their gates. I'm going to give you what you need in this battle. Mm. That's Deuteronomy 20. Protocols for war. When you go to war. How many of us have been fighting battles, praying for miracles, praying for blessings, but yet we didn't understand true warfare, true spiritual warfare, true battle tactics and strategies. We didn't know to not fear our enemies. You know, they often say new level, new devil. And a lot of people think about that and they say, well, if I go higher in God, that means I'm going to go up against higher demons and I'm, I don't want to do that. I'm scared. You don't know what you're missing out on because you won't go higher in God. But God told him when you go against enemies that may even seem more powerful than you, do not be afraid, do not fear because God Almighty is fighting on your behalf. And then he will have them go before the priest or the priest will come before them and he will give them an encouraging word and say your God is fighting with you today. Have you went to the man or woman of God and asked them any prayer strategies? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. And then he says, have you taken care of your business? Have you set things in order for you to go into spiritual warfare? You can't have things of the enemy in your camp. You can't really have, you know, we don't need to have unsettled business. I'm going to tell you like this, though, as you're going through battle, and if you have any unsettled business, it's going to come out in the battle. God going to help you get that fixed up real quick and fast and in a hurry. And then he says, if you're afraid, it's okay. It's normal to be afraid. Okay. I mean, it's, it's part of, it can be a part of who are, who we are. We're wrapped in flesh. It's okay to even say, Lord, I'm afraid of this battle. Help me, Lord. David often told God what he was experiencing. He often told God what he was feeling. It's okay for you to tell God the same, but don't let your fears cause other people to doubt. You get somewhere and get in the word of God and you fast and you pray until your faith is built up. And as your faith is built up, you're going to spark somebody else's faith to build up. But don't be the stumbling block. And then God tells us certain people to outright attack and certain people to, he gives us battle strategies of how to engage in war. Some of us have lost battles because we were engaging in war the wrong way. And then some of us are in trouble because we didn't utterly destroy the things that God told us to utterly destroy. And those things crept back up. They were able to reproduce and come back at us. And then some of us have cut down the trees that was supposed to nourish us. Get back. No longer cut down the things that will feed your body, feed your spirit. And God will even show you the things that cut down. That will now become your weapons. 
of mass destruction against the enemy's camp. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for the day. We thank you for your this word. We thank you for your knowledge, this understanding. As we engage in spiritual warfare, Father God, teach us how to fight. Teach us the proper strategy. Teach us your protocol, your will, your way, your word. Let us not go out fighting in our own strength, but fighting according to how you want us to fight, according to your ways. Send forth your man or woman of God to give us the battle strategies to tell us how to engage the enemy. Mm. Help us to get our things in order, Father God, so that when we go into war, we are straight up sergeants, generals in the army. No room for the enemy to play with our lives. And Father God, forgive us what we've cut down the things that were supposed to nourish us during the battle. Father God, reestablish these things now and we will now drink and eat from these precious trees. Father God, you are our God and we're your people. Teach our hands to war and our fingers to battle. Teach us how to walk according to your will, your way, and your word. You are our God and we're your people. And that settles every battle in the name of Jesus. Let's switch gears for a moment. And go into the Deliverance and Spiritual Warfare Manual. I love this word, y'all. When you go to war, do you know the protocols? Yes, Father. But let's continue on with talking about Belial, the wicked ruler, and the, some of the spirits associated. We spoke, we spoke previously about the spirit of idolatry. We spoke briefly about uncleanness and Jezebel. And we talked about how Belial works with these demons. And his ultimate goal is to bring God's judgment and destruction upon the land and the people. Look around you. You will see this stuff manifest around us. So today we're going to look at the spirits of rape and sexual abuse. These are other spirits that work with Belial. Judges 19, 25 to 29 tells us of one of the violence acts recorded in the word of God. It says that the sons of Belial raped a concubine literally to death. Uh-oh. This abomination, uh, this abominable act called civil war in Israel. The tribes of Israel gather against the city of Gibeah. To destroy it. The word of God calls this act lewdness. Webster's define lewd as evil, wicked, sexually unchaste or licentious, obscene, salacious. And the word obscene means disgusting to the senses, repulsal. Thus Belial causes men to commit vow and obscene acts. When you get a chance, go into Judges 19 verses 25 to 29. Very interesting story. The men came to the sit to the door of this older gentleman's house to get the visitor that he had let stay with him that night to come get the man. The men of the city wanted to have sex with him. The men of the city wanted to rape this man. And the owner of the house said this stuff should not be among the sons of God. And they were going to basically kill the old man if he didn't send the man out. And it says the man pushed, the, the, the visiting man actually pushed his concubine, his secondary wife. Ladies, don't be these secondary wives. Don't be these side chicks. Don't men don't care about you. And she was pushed out. And it says these wicked men raped her all night long. And she came to the doorpost in the morning and died on the steps. This is in the Bible. Not saying that God ordained it, but he's showing you the wickedness of when people turn from God, when these demons and devils are manifesting people's lives. And the husband takes her body and takes it back home and cuts her body up in 12 pieces and sends each 
tribe a piece of her body. That means she had to have a bruise or bite on every inch of her body. And he was showing them the evil that was among them. The Belial, the wicked ruler. Those demonic spirits. And how it had manifested among the children of God. And it caused a literal civil war. The children of God said, no, this cannot be among us. It's time if you're seeing this stuff happening around you, it's time to stand up and say, this cannot be among us. It's time for us to go into spiritual war. Are you ready for war? What do you do when you go to war? And they went against the people that were doing these things. The proliferation of rape and sexual abuse, including incest and sodomy and anal sex. Uh-oh. Incest is, you know, sex between family members. Are the results of the wicked spirit of Bilal. And when I say sodomy, that goes man and man or woman and man. God did not intend for us to use our bodies in that way. This pastor has ministered to thousands of women and men who were the victims of sexual abuse as children. He's also cast out spirits of death that came, came in during this violation. Because guess what? People that are raped or have been raped or molested, suicide normally comes in. Depression normally comes in. Uh-oh. Help us, Father. Help us, Father. When someone is violated in this way, it can be like death coming into their souls. Sexual abuse is rampant in our nation, and these filthy spirits are the work of the wicked ruler, Bilal. I just watched a, not watched, but listened to a video that said 100,000 children are being used in, 100,000 children are being used in sexual practices. One child that could be used in uh, sex trafficking, human trafficking. Normally, they're in this system for seven years if they live that long. Seven years, they're in this. And in the course of that time frame, one child can have sex with, have been forced to have sex with 6,000 men. We need the fire of God to be upon this society. We need the fire of God to be exposing this mess. Because you got people kidnapping children, but you got the men that's going to pay for it. Pay to have sex with a child. And they said the children range in age from 6 to 13 years old. One lady, one child that helped, that was able to escape. She said she was forced to sleep with 20 men a night. Belial, y'all, Belial, people, we got to get up and pray and move and move and do warfare against these things and not just stand idle by and let it happen. Sexual abuse is rampant in our nation and these 50 spirits are the work of the wicked ruler Belial. Back to Judges, the tribes of Israel were so repulsed by this act of mass rape that they gathered together against the city of Gibeah and demanded that those who were guilty of this act, of this act be put to death. I'm going to say this. In this country, there was slavery. And many of the women and men in this country that were in slavery were raped. Bilal, the wicked ruler, were among the slave owners. And those curses stand in place until those slave owners and their family members repent. I don't care if you didn't own a slave in this country. If you knew that your family members did, the curses that were opened up during that time period rest on you now and you need to repent and renounce those curses. Get under the blood of Jesus so these things can be broken off. The family members of the slaves who were raped those acts by those filthy demons Not calling the people filthy demons. I'm just saying. That open stuff and even into our bloodlines for generational curses, soul ties, and things. We're going to continue to teach on this. 
There's things that you faced in your life you didn't even know it came from the acts of the rape of our great grandparents and granddaddies and grandmoms. Incest running amok in the families. Homosexuality running amok in the family. These doors were open to Bilal, but it's not for Bilal to be exposed, bound, and cast out. There is much controversy today in America concerning the death penalty. Penalty. Many liberals in our nation think it's cruel method that needs to be outlawed. And I'm reading from this book. However, in the word of God, there were sins that were abominable enough to merit death. My Lord. Help us, Father. Open people's eyes to the sins that they're doing against you that can bring death, a sentence of death on their lives in the name of Jesus. Help, Father. Y'all, they said, you know, those that do pedophilia, they said there's no cure for them. Once they start having sex with children, that's all their flesh wants. So now they're trying to say that pedophilia is a natural occurrence, that it's okay for men and women to be in love with children. That's Bilal, y'all. They're trying to pass laws and they're trying to turn change terminology in the science books and in dictionaries and encyclopedias to say this stuff is okay. But these things can bring the death penalty, the judgment of God down. This book is not debating the pros and cons of the death penalty, but suffice it to say, it is found in the word of God. The spirit of Bilal desires for us to tolerate vow acts in our nations. Y'all know we often see some crazy story and we are texting it and emailing it and messaging it. But how often are we seeing these, these, these vow acts being performed in this country? Are we praying about it? Binding those spirits up. I challenge everyone now. Each story that you read from this point on and you see some vile act was committed, you start, start binding that devil and demon up in the name of Jesus. It's warfare time. God's given us a protocol for what to do when we go to war. There are some sins that are so vile and abominable that they should stare more indignation and in most people, the saved and the unsaved. So that was spirits dealing with rape and sexual abuse, spirits of alcohol and drunkenness. The spirit of Bilal operates through alcohol and drunkenness. Drunkenness is a way to break down morals and opens people up to lust and perversion. Uh-oh. I've talked to some young men that would go to the club and they would drink in the club. And I've heard them say they woke awakened in hotel rooms with women they didn't even know. And they were all, they were both naked. They know that they both had sex, but they don't even remember anything. How they got there, don't even know what they did. Help, Father. It breaks down morals and opens people up to lust and perversion. They used to outlaw alcohol. Now it's everywhere. Be careful. They, they used to outlaw marijuana. Now they're putting it everywhere. Why? They want people to be broken down morals and open people up to less than perversion because once you start doing these acts these demons can feed off of it even more than that once you start doing these acts and you get caught you're going to jail then you're into legalized slavery stay out the judicial system stay out the court system it is a known fact that many children of alcoholic parents are often victims of sexual abuse, including incest. Uh-oh. Alcohol can also open the door for spirits of rape, including date rape, which is so prevalent on many of the college campuses. Help, Father. Proverbs 23, 31 to 33 shows the connection of the spirit of perversion to drunkenness. Do y'all know? Uh-oh. The Bible talks about Noah getting drunk and it says that his son Ham came in and saw his father naked and went and told his brothers now in doing some study and in research 
it has been taught or it was along the notion that this son and Noah's drunkenness, I don't know if the son was drunk as well, that he may have been intimate with his father. That seems far-fetched. Uh, I know. But what he did was so profane and so vile that Noah cursed his children. It was abominable, whatever he did. <sighs> to pervert means to cause to turn aside or away from what is good or true. Or morally right to corrupt, to cause to turn aside from what is generally done or accepted. Sexual perversion has become rampant in our nation with the promotion of homosexuality and lesbianism as acceptable and alternative lifestyles. These are perversions according to the word of God. Spirits of perversions, including homosexuality and lesbianism, operate under the strong man of Belial. This is also referred to in the word of God as sodomy, anal sex. I'm a nurse. I've done uh, research and Facebook posts about the dangers of anal sex, the spread of HIV through the tearing of those fragile tissues and blood vessels in that area, the spread of infection and disease, how that muscle, because of that act, is worn down in the person that is Try not to be crass. I told you it's a Christian channel, but it's not the typical. Often that person loses control of their, their bowel muscles. And they could defecate or go to the bathroom on themselves. They lose their continent. They lose their control. Who wants to engage in those type of acts? Can you see how the devil has perverted the things of God? Father God, help us. Sodomy is defined as a copulation with a member of the same sex or with an animal, even bestiality. It is also non coital and it includes anal or oral copulation with a member of the opposite sex. The term sodomite is mentioned five times in the Old Testament. Sodomites were temple prostitutes who were part of the worship of the idol gods. I told y'all we would talk on some touchy things of fertility in Canaan. These vile acts were part of idol worship in Canaan, in the Canaanites. That's what God destroyed them because they had these temples where the people would go and have sex with these temple priests. It was a form of worship. They had sex with every orifice, every opening of the body. They were doing some vile things, y'all. And God said, destroy them. Help, Father. Help, Father. We're going to stop and we're going to look at the spirit of... We'll look at pornography. So that kind of goes along the same line. The Harrison translation of Psalm 101 and 3 says, I will have not, I will have not have anything unworthy in my presence. This shows us the attitude and abhorrence we have as, we have as people of God, that we as people of God should have toward anything related to Bilal. Anything base, anything vile, anything unworthy, anything unclean, ungodly, contemptible, wicked, blasphemous or shameful we should resist and hate we are to hate what is evil and cleave cling to what is good romans 12 and 9 abhor is a strong word it means to regard with extreme repugnance to loathe to turn aside or keep away from especially in scorn or shuddering fear to reject to hate like contempt like it's something that disgusts you Psalm 101 and 3 can apply to the present day rise of pornography and sexual filth that B Bilal is flooding our nation with. One of the vilest forms of pornography is kitty porn. This is a wicked demon, y'all. Wickedness. Pornography is the abuse of women, men, and children. 
and it's rampant even in the church. Uh oh. I've read. I'm. I'm a. I guess you can say I'm a low key nerd. And I've researched studies and the statistics. When church conventions come into town, the hotels report that that's the highest purchases of porn. God has to expose Belial and these wicked demons so people can be set free. I told you this is not your typical Christian channel because we got to speak on the things that other people won't speak on so people can get set free. One of the valid forms of pornography is kitty porn, which is a thriving business supported by pedophiles. Pedophilia is sexual perversion in which children are the preferred sexual objects. Pornography opens the door for a host of evil spirits of lust and perversion. And there has been a strong connection between pornography and rape in some studies. Thank you, Father. We're going to end there and pray because that's a lot of stuff that we just touched on that we definitely need to pray about. Father God, help us. Father God, expose Bilal and these wicked demons. Expose Bilal and these wicked demons in our lives, in our families, in our spouses, in our marriages, in our children, in our churches, in our communities. Expose by fire these evil demons, spirits of rape and sexual abuse, spirits of alcohol and drunkenness, spirits of pornography, Father God. Anything associated with these these acts, rape, incest, sodomy, pedophilia, homosexuality, Father God. Father God, heal your people, cleanse your people, set us free. Help us to walk according to your will and way. Help us to be cleansed from this impurity. Father God, we pray for our unsaved loved ones that are in alcohol, in addictions, in alternate lifestyles, into pornography, whatever it is, Father God. Forgive us of the things we've even done, Father God, that was along these lines. Father God, we repent of these things right now. We renounce these things right now. Forgive us for what we watched on TV. The things we've read, the videos, the pictures we've looked at, Lord. Forgive us on today. Cleanse us, Lord. Cleanse our eyes. Cleanse our minds. Cleanse our bodies. Bind up these devils and demons, Father God, that's trying to run rampant in this community, this city, this state, our government, our nation, and us. Bind them now, Father God, and we cast them out in the name of Jesus. We cast them into a dry land. Cover us in the blood of Jesus where they cannot re-enter. Help us on today, Father God. Send forth your war angels to battle in the heavenlies on our behalf. Protect the children. Protect your women. Protect your men, Lord. Father God, we need you like never before. Continue to expose Bilal and these wicked demons working with it. Exposed by fire so your people can be set free. And spark your people, Father God, to get saved, to live for you. To walk according to your will, your way, and your word. Father God, you are our God and we're your people and that settles it all. Thank you for the blessed reading of your word. Thank you for the knowledge given in this book. Some of the things that we have said today may have seemed harsh, but it has to be addressed in order to be healed. I'm a nurse. And if there's a wound that has a scab over it, if there's a wound that has black necrotic tissue over it, we have to cut down or we have to call the doctor in to cut down till we get to the fresh tissue that will bleed. That's beefy red. It hurts sometimes, but you got to cut the dead areas off in order for it to breathe, in order for the wound to heal. So God has given his word 
so he can show us the areas that are dead, so he can show us the wounds that are starting to smell and rot so that the doctor can come in and cut away the diseased area, can cut away the infected areas, can cut away the dead areas so that you can now be healed, so that I can now be healed, so that we can all be healed together. That is God, God's purpose and goal for our lives. He's got to expose it so we no longer will agree with it and come out of it. That's why God told the people to kill certain people. He told them to destroy it because if they didn't, they would soon become to agree with it. Y'all, this society is pushing so many things that God told us not to do. It's time for a mind shift. It's time for a reality check. It's time for us to get back to God. Let's close out. Father God, we just thank you. Thank you for this word. Let this word be blessed. Let this word be received. Let this word save and transform lives. Let this word bring people out of bondage. Let people now begin to be healed, set free, saved. Even as this video ends, let the words that were spoken in this video begin to resonate and tug at the hearts and minds of your people. Do a new thing in us, Lord. Do a new thing in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray, amen. Thank you for joining me today. I know we touched on some things that you're like, what? This is a Christian channel and she's talking like this. Somebody has to. Because there's so many people suffering in church. There's so many people suffering in the community because people won't talk or won't teach on sex and the things God said do and don't do. They won't touch on the nitty gritty. And so many people are in bondage. But God says, I got to expose it so you can be set free from it. It may be a little bit uncomfortable, but we got to deal with it. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Well, this is Faith Manifested with Andrea. Thank you for joining me today. Please feel free to like, share, comment. Please feel free to subscribe to this channel. We will continue to touch on things that might be a little bit uncomfortable that has to be dealt with. Children are being molested in families and when they come forward, the children are blamed. It's time to be healed. The children, the child was already molested, so they had their injury, and it's like they're being re-injured a second time when the family members don't believe them. Boyfriends are raping the daughters, and the mothers, because they want a man in their house, they're allowing it to go on. And vice versa. Wounded children become wounded adults. And these wounds can be open doors for demons to come in. Look around y'all. Look around us. We're seeing the manifestation of things that even happen to people as children. Help Father. I may touch on some touchy situations. But it's got to be dealt with. We're going to look at it always from a biblical perspective. So please feel free to like, share, comment. Please feel free to subscribe to this channel. Please feel free to hit the bell so you're notified when new videos are uploaded. Continue to grow in God. Continue to grow in grace. Continue to grow in the word. And as you grow in the word, your faith will be increased. And we shall truly see our faith manifested in this world. Remember, God has told us what to do when we go to war. He's given us the protocols. He's given us the laws and rules for war. And now he's showing us the things that we are warring against. Put on your armor, soldier. Report for battle. Get your battle strategies. Get your battle tactics. Practice with the weapons God has given you. 
and let's move forward in the things, the ways and will of God. I love you. I'll be blessed. This is Faith Manifested with Andrea. Have a blessed day.